final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 8484 in the name of Stuart Stevenson on Murray Library closures. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on Stuart Stevenson to open the debate with up to seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. It's thought that the oldest library in the world was that at Ebla in Syria, and that it was founded more than four and a half thousand years ago. As such, it was based in what was then and is again a turbulent area of the world. After its destruction, it remained unknown until the discovery of the text of an international treaty inscribed on a clay tablet in what was later realised was a library. Today, it's a derelict archaeological site. Now, today's changes for libraries in Murray are less dramatic, but the effects of closure can be profound for the communities of Finechty, Houtman, Port Noki, and Rothes. Closure removes a source of knowledge, diminishes opportunities for learning, and reduces access to vital infrastructure such as the internet. The initial proposals, which were passed by the Tory and independent councillors who run Murray Council, were to be even more draconian and were in clear breach of equalities legislation. Thankfully, some sense was restored uh, when the legal consequences became more obvious to administration councillors. And a very vigorous community-led campaign represented in the public gallery this evening by members of the Save Our Library uh, uh, Murray uh, campaign showed just how disconnected the council had become from some of the communities it must serve. Lord Wellington, a Tory Prime Minister until he lost office over reform in 1830, was strongly opposed to education for all, fearing the consequences of knowledge. Now, I absolutely do not suggest that today's Tories hold his views, but the effects of their cuts carry the risk of a journey to increased ignorance, just perhaps what Wellington might have wished. But for a party of business, there are also practical effects to deplore. In rural Scotland, access to broadband can be limited or absent. For businesses big enough to pay VAT are now required to pay uh, the, to submit their accounts online, loss of access to the internet via their local library is more than a mere inconvenience. It takes time out of running a business, increases their costs, and risks default on tight HMRC rules when they have to travel further to access a terminal in their library. And for the unemployed, access to the internet is vital to get access to the benefits uh, to which they're entitled. And of course, the unemployed are much less likely to have access in their own home uh, to the internet. And for Murray Council itself, they now rely on the internet for people who want to get a council house to use that means of accessing that council service and increasing numbers. So libraries are not simply about books. In my constituency, the communities of Finechte and Port Noki now have no library. I know that my colleague Richard Lochhead, who is in Brussels tonight, texted me to share his concern in a similar way about the communities of Houtman and Rothes in the area he represents. The closures are driven by the need to manage the council's costs. While when the opposition demands in this place more money to mitigate the effects of cuts from the Tory Lib Dem Westminster government, we on the government benches always ask from where that money should come. And I'm going to avoid the trap uh, of proposing more expenditure without proposing where it should come from. There are proposals from the council for a link road in Murray, and it's an easy cut for the council to make, not to proceed with that. It saves much more than is needed to keep the libraries open, and it opens for the council a wide range of other options uh, which their current financial spending plans deny them. It would respond to genuine and very significant public concern about the proposed route for the new road, and cancellation would protect uh, important parts of the local environment. Uh, Richard Lockhead and myself joined road and library campaigners on the march and rally in Elgin on the 12th of October. 
it was abundantly clear that the Council's current choices are not popular with a significant part of the Murray community. Now, for the Cabinet Secretary who will be responding to tonight's debate, it's easier than it sometimes is, because it's not for her to direct Murray Council's policy on libraries, and I don't expect to hear that she's going to change her approach on that. But it may be useful to hear what value, what benefits the Scottish Government thinks are delivered by libraries. And of course, isn't it so appropriate that we're having this debate uh, on this particular day when in our own Parliament we have an exhibition for, from what might be the patron saint of uh, libraries, Andrew uh, Carnegie, who of course was responsible for so many libraries across Scotland. Uh, on Independence Day, the 4th of July 1962, John F. Kennedy uh, said, to govern is to choose. The responsibilities and opportunities of the Murray Council are, of course, substantially less than those discharged by JFK, but they share, as politicians, a duty to serve. Making the right decision can enhance the luster and reputation of those who make it. In this case, even though doing the right thing makes it more difficult for me to challenge them in future if my political opponents make the right decisions in relation to libraries. In governing, I suggest to Murray Council it's time to choose libraries rather than roads. Presiding officer. Many thanks. We turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. Rhoda Grant to be followed by Fiona MacLeod. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I congratulate Stuart Stevenson on securing this debate? And can I also pay tribute to the Save Our Libraries Murray campaign group and also welcome them to the gallery? Um, I met with the group and they're a thoughtful, hard-working group of people that are passionate about retaining their library services. And they've already saved three of the threatened libraries and continue to look for ways of saving the others. Libraries are an essential service. They're places where people learn and where people can access information. They are a true equaliser, especially in these days when those who cannot afford computers or internet connections are liable to be left behind. Uh, their local library can provide that access. And it's also important to business and local communities as well, as Stuart Stevenson said, that returns are now done online. But the Scottish Government also asked people to make application to the Rural Development Fund online. And often in some of those small communities, um, the library is the only um, source of an internet connection because there is no broadband. Um, those by providing services online, uh, governments, can, governments councils can save money. However, those that can't access it stand to be left behind. Um, without uh, libraries, the situation would be much worse. Libraries are also places that give pleasure. They're, there's something very, very indulgent about settling down and sticking your head in a good book, maybe something we don't all get the chance to do very often. Uh, but libraries make sure that that pleasure is available to all. Um, the Equalities Impact Assessment was clear that the closure of Burghead, Cullen and Dufftown libraries, which have now been saved, would have impacted on the equalities, it would have impacted on equalities in these villages. However, speaking to those who live in Rothes, they strongly believe that their impact assessment was not carried out properly. Um, it was at the wrong time, there was little information about the assessment, and those who used the library were therefore do not feel that they were properly consulted in this. And there's also a cost attached to the closure of the libraries. The libraries in Rothes and Ho Hopeman have received EU funding and, this, and some of this will have to be repaid at a, a cost of around £41,000. Had they been kept open for two more years, no repayment would have to be made. So that money has to go back, but neither does it take account of the money wasted, the matched funding and what's already been drawn down. Um, so surely this cost offsets much of the savings over that period and a longer period of reflection would have allowed alternatives to be explored regarding how we make use of those libraries and make them more cost effective. No one's arguing that the council have to find savings. The unfunded council tax freeze means councils are facing tough decisions about how they fund vital service. However, I would hope that the council would have worked with everyone, especially those like the Save Our Libraries Murray campaign group who are keen to be proactive and find solutions. 
I understand the campaign group are now exploring a community asset transfer for Hopeman Library to provide a community hub as well as a library and internet access services. And I commend them for this. I hope they will receive the support from the Council and the Scottish Government to enable them to do that and at least allow some provision in this village. And I very much hope solutions can be found to those problems. Thank you. I now call Fiona MacLeod to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, of course, have to start with by um, referring members to two uh, entries in my register of interest as a member of the Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals and as the Chair of the Scottish Library and Information Council. Can I thank Stuart for bringing this debate tonight, not just um, on behalf of, of the, li the library users of Murray and the campaigners that are here with us tonight, and the, the passion that the library users of Murray has been shown in the March and Rally that Stuart referred to, but also for me as a librarian, it's wonderful to be at a debate where I'm listening to people like Stuart Stevenson, Rhoda Grant, laud how important libraries are. And I'm sure that the other members will um, impress me as much with their enthusiasm for libraries. When you're looking at uh, services from a library, if I can be very technical, you have to go back to the 1887 legislation that talks about local authorities must provide an adequate library service for all. Now, there is no definition of what an adequate library service is, but through SLIC, we have taken many years looked at how we assess a library service and how we allow library services in Scotland to benchmark themselves against each other in order to reach uh, a, a, at least a working definition of adequacy of library services. And in Stuart Stevenson's motion, he does talk about the public library quality improvement matrix that we use in order to do this assessment and benchmarking. And I do want to get a bit technical and refer to some of it, but can I tell you that, as, as in Stuart Stevenson's motion, it says that this is uh, under review, and one of the things that will be reviewed is its name. We're not going to call it PLIM anymore. It, it will make it absolutely clear. Now, there are seven quality indicators when we are looking at assessing libraries in Scotland. And previously, when we looked at library, uh, libraries in Murray, Murray came out as one of our five-star services in Scotland. So I found it quite interesting to take my seven quality uh, indicators and cross-reference them with uh, the council paper that Murray wrote on the 10th of September 2013. And if I could just highlight a few of them to show that Murray's five-star library status is definitely uh, uh, you know, in danger. But not only is its five-star status in danger, I believe that it will no longer be providing an adequate library service. Therefore, Murray Council will not be meeting the legislative requirements that are upon them, whether we have a definite definition of adequacy or not. If I look at um, quality, uh, quality indicator one, which is access to information, now that's talking about access to current information resources. And at a low level, I would be looking and finding access to current information resources is limited, that there is minimal provision, and that the provision is not actively promoted by staff. That would give a library service a very low rating. And if I can then quote from, from the Council's own paper at 3.1, that they will end up providing a library service at the minimum level required by the Council. So I could go through the other six quality indicators which I don't have time for. But I think from that one example will show you that Murray Council really have to think very carefully before they proceed any further along this route. In conclusion, presiding officer, librarians campaign for library services, not for buildings. But as the demise of the book has been predicted for almost the whole of my library career of over 35 years, and it hasn't happened in the digital age, so the buildings that libraries are housed in are still important because we can't pr yet provide a virtual library service without libraries to provide them from. Thank you, presiding officer.
Many thanks. And can I just remind all members to use full names when referring to colleagues, please? Mary Scanlon to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I first of all remind Stuart Stevenson that a majority of Murray councillors voted against the Elgin Link Road last week, including the planning convener. Uh, like others, I welcome this opportunity to discuss the difficult budget decisions Murray Council's independent Conservative administration have to take to meet the 11 per cent or 30 million reduction in their budget by 2017. I know that all Murray councillors would like to save and enhance the services they currently supply, but that is not an option. The independent Conservative administration undertook a thorough consultation process over several months with the public and unfortunately library provision was ranked lower than many other services by people in Murray. And while the administration has been criticised for the closure of these libraries, the Labour group agreed to seven of the library closures in February. By September they suggested that four should close and in November they said that they should all stay open. But at least Labour councillors in Murray offered some input into the budget debate. In February, the SNP group said they'd not had enough time or information to make the budget decisions, despite having the same time, access to officers and budget papers as everyone else. The SNP opposed all the library closures, but offered no alternatives at all for savings. And I take the point, the reasonable point Stuart Stevenson made on that issue. Nine months later, the SNP had still not come forward with any savings to save the libraries. And back in February, Stuart Stevenson condemned Murray Council for planning to close seven out of eight libraries in Murray, clearly oblivious to the fact that Murray has 15 libraries and not eight. And then, of course, we had the Cabinet Secretary for Culture intervening, criticising the decisions taken by the Council, which prompted the President of COSLA, Councillor David O'Neill, to write to the Cabinet Secretary on the 16th of October in response to her press release, stating, and I have the letter here, I was astonished and angry when I saw that you had apparently, what you apparently had to say on the matter, not only because it is clearly a local matter, something we're often told in here, the letter continues, I'm sorry I can't, I've, I've got less, one and a half minutes left. Faced with, uh, the letter continues, faced with the finances that your government and councils have, demand for our services will always outstrip our ability to pay. He finishes by saying, I do not accept that you as a government minister, irrespective of your remit, should be involving the government in something over which you have only limited knowledge or understanding and is for decision through local democratic and accountable structures. I agree with COSLA. But Mr Stevenson may also wish to condemn the SNP councillors in Perth and Conross, who have supported cuts to the cultural services within the council, of £281,000, including library closures. And the SNP-led West Dumbarton Council Mrs. Scanlon, closed three of their libraries. Mrs Scanlon, I'm afraid the debate is about Murray library closures, so yes. if you could return to that, Yes, please. and at the end of the day, we know difficult decisions must be made, and Murray Council will save 286000 annually through the budget savings in the library service. Uh, the area-based review has been set up since this experience. It includes councillors in Murray from every grouping on the council. They are working collectively and collaboratively to achieve the savings required over the next few years by looking at service sharing and other uh, initiatives. Uh, I also welcome the campaigners today. They have showed great spirit in their campaign and engaged with many people in Murray. Uh, they are passionate about libraries and I commend them for it. And they can take a great deal of credit and satisfaction that down to their efforts, Murray still has 11 out of 15 libraries. 
Murray Council has many more difficult decisions to make, but I trust they have learned from their experiences with library closures and can now move forward, working together as an entire council to make the best decisions for the people of Murray against the background of ever-diminishing resources and increasing demands. I'm afraid we should all time. respect local decision-making. Thank you, and I call Joan McAlpine. Four minutes, but there is some time for interventions. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to add my congratulations to Stuart Stevenson for securing a debate on this important subject. Libraries are vital for so many communities across Scotland, enhancing social cohesion, supporting and empowering community groups, and encouraging lifelong learning. I represent the south of Scotland, a predominantly rural area like Moray, where the ability to travel long distances, often without the assistance of reliable public transport, determines an individual's quality of life. In communities like those I represent, mobile libraries are of great value to people who are themselves less mobile. In various client surveys conducted across the country, those found to be most reliant on these services, such as over 65s and mothers with young children, are already being disproportionately hit by Westminster's austerity agenda and cuts to public services. A recent library customer survey carried out in East Lothian in my region found that 67% of library users were female and 30% of total customers were over the age of 65. In the light of this, I was alarmed to hear that the council in East Lothian, like Moray, are giving consideration to proposals to cut library services, particularly mobile library services in the area. Ms McAlpine, as I said to Mr Scanlon, it is very specifically about Murray library closures of the debate. Thank you. Okay. Um, two vehicles serve communities and individuals in the county whose access to libraries may otherwise be limited. Places served um, by mobile libraries include sheltered housing, old people's homes, suburbs of some town, farm cottages, villages, rural schools and playgroups. And mobile libraries um, uh, have a fortnightly route calendar. There has been no public consultation on this at all. And as you can imagine, it's causing some alarm in the rural villages of the county. Discontinuation of one vehicle might deliver a saving of £5,000 a year for the Council, but mobile libraries have been found to provide a service to the affected communities at a fraction of the cost. While I accept that in these tough economic times, local authorities have to choose carefully how to spend limited funds, I would urge them, whether in East Lothian or Moray, to use what resources they have wisely and protect the most valued services at the heart of our communities. At a national level, the Scottish Government have strived to do this in the face of a budget cut of £3.1 billion or 9.9% over the current five-year spending review period. Uh, this Government have successfully prioritised and protected our NHS and abolished tuition fees while fully funding a council tax freeze that by 2017 will have saved the average Bandy household £1,682. By comparison, local government has been treated fairly under the current Scottish administration. As the Cabinet Secretary announced last week, in both 2014-15 and 2015-16, local government financial settlements will be maintained at around £10.6 billion. Ms McAlpine, I'd be very grateful if we could return to the subject of Murray Library closures before you conclude. The protection of local authority funding has meant that in Scotland we have not yet seen the massive library closes, the likes of which we have been ubiquitous throughout the rest of the UK. A preliminary scoping study in March to gauge the extent and impact of local authority efficiency savings showed considerable variety across Scotland, but the position compares favourably with other parts of the UK where closures have been more common. That is to be welcomed, but we must do more to pre prevent library closures. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to take this opportunity for a call the Minister to remind all members that when members' debates are very specifically written about a specific subject, then members should stick to that subject, particularly when uh, people have come along to hear the debate about that specific subject. Um, we now turn to the response from Fiona Hislop to the debate. Uh, Minister, I can give you seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I also want to congratulate Stuart Stevenson for securing the debate. The motion highlights the many areas where libraries have a real impact on our lives, and for this reason, I think it is an important issue to cover. 
The proposal to close libraries in Murray has been a high-profile one, and the Council has decided to keep three of the branches open, although still shutting four and withdrawing one mobile service. Ultimately, this is a decision for Murray Council's elected members. I did write to Murray Council to express my concern and urge them to reconsider. The provision of library services is a matter for local authorities and the Scottish Government has no statutory powers or duties in relation to libraries. But I also would want to point out to Mary Scanlon that some of the budget pressures that are being reflected are pressures that have come from the Conservative and Liberal Democrats coalition Westminster allocation and this government has protected local authorities spending to such an extent it is a higher proportion of our total budget now than it was when we came into office. I'd also perhaps point out that the closures in Murray equate from one local authority equate to the same number as for the whole of Scotland in 12-13. So that perhaps gives a perspective on the issue. The Scottish Government believes it is vital that adequate library services are provided for the good of communities across Scotland. We support the Scottish Library and Information Council to offer leadership to the sector and through our partnership with them we have supported the development of the Public Library Quality Improvement Matrix as we heard from Fiona uh, MacLeod to help evaluate library services and deliver quality provision that meets the needs of the communities they serve. And I perhaps would like to remind Mary Scallon and also COSLA that SLIC's responsibility is to inform Forum and advise government and that's what they do and they do that very well. Traditionally public libraries have loaned books. Recent figures from the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy show that although loans of books are declining down 8.5 percent, more importantly the number of visits remains high at over 28 million per year. Libraries offers, offers not only books, but much more besides, and I want to highlight two areas where they make a particularly significant contribution. One area is the move to an increasingly online world. This was referred to by Rhoda Grant. In this digital age, libraries can and already do play a pivotal role in helping people to take their first steps into the digital world. The Scottish Government is committed to increasing digital participation and we are working with partners across the public, private and third sectors to develop innovative programmes that will be responsive to people's needs and offering, where possible, a choice of locations to best support learning requirements. And libraries play an important role in this. They provide equipment and internet access for those who don't have it and also training for those who are unsure of how to go about getting online. And people without IT skills increasingly see the library as a first point of contact and as the motion recognises people are increasingly expected to use online services in the UK government's welfare system. The Scottish Government's work with SLIC is supporting libraries to fully engage with the digital participation agenda. Uh, half a million pounds um, annual public library improvement fund has allowed digital projects to be delivered in and around and by public libraries across Scotland ranging from beginners classes on basic IT to more advanced accredited courses being provided which are targeting all age groups from preschool age cyber tots to our older population of silver surfers and I'd like to commend SLIC for their ongoing work in this area and their support for this agenda. The second area where libraries make a significant impact is the development of good literacy skills. The Scottish Government recognises that a successful country requires strong and secure literacy skills and our literacy action plan highlights the importance of reading as a valued activity from an early age and the benefits of reading in the home. And the plan's vision is to improve literacy levels for all from the early years through to adulthood and support those with the lowest levels of literacy, breaking the well-evidenced link between poverty and deprivation and poor literacy skills. So this vision will require sustained commitment and continuing action at all levels of government and through support at all points of the education system and wider public services, including, of course, libraries. The plan's delivery and impact is being overseen by the Standing Literacy Commission, chaired by our Chief Medical Officer, Sahari Burns. And in September 2012, the Standing Literacy Commission published an interim progress report on the Literacy Action Plan. And it said about libraries, and I quote, libraries in Scotland have a key role to play in improving literacy, as well as promoting a love of reading and books. And we support a number of schemes in Scotland aimed at encouraging people to read. For example, Bookbug, the Scottish Book Trust's Early Years Programme, the Play, Talk, Read campaign, encouraging parents and carers to play, talk and read more with their babies and young children. And of course, the recently successful Second Book Week Scotland, also promoting reading to all ages across Scotland. 
650 events were held across Scotland, including six in Murray. Elgin Library hosted the prize giving for the October Reading Challenge with the children's writer Eleanor Updale. And I'm proud to say that with Slick's support, all local authorities took part. Projects ranged from a film night at Bridgeton in Glasgow to an evening with Christopher Brookmeyer in Saltcoats. Edinburgh Central Library and the Glasgow's Mitchell Library hosted pop-up bookshops and Kirkcaldy Museum and Library had an interactive murder mystery night based on the Anne Cleave novel The Glass Room, where performers took on the role of the main suspects. There was something for everyone, young or old. And the role of public library services in supporting literacy cannot be underestimated. And where better to encourage reading than in public libraries? libraries, where, which remain one of the free universal services that operate at the heart of communities across Scotland. In 2012-13, they loaned almost 22 million items and provided over 8 million hours of internet access. Saturday, the 8th of February, President Officer, is National Libraries Day, and I think we should all look for opportunities to promote the work of libraries on that day and beyond if we want to show how much these services are valued within our communities. Interestingly, the Scottish Household Survey found that reading for pleasure remains the most popular cultural activity in Scotland, enjoyed by 63% of the adult population, and a visit to the library is the third most popular type of cultural activity, 29% after films and live music. And I find it hard to believe that Murray, in terms of its experience, is an exception to that, uh, to, to that experience from the rest of Scotland. Libraries loan almost 22 million items a year and received over 28 million visits in 2012-13. So, President Officer, what I've said, we have a vibrant library service happening in Scotland and being delivered in Scotland. We have a great deal to look forward to, new and innovative services, but they need to be there for the communities to be able to use them. And as Stuart Stevenson's motion recognises, our libraries are something to be proud of and we should continue to support them. Thank you. That concludes Stuart Stevenson's debate on Murray Library closures. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.